Hello, good day. Welcome back to Coding with Verl. And in this video, um, let's get to know Misty. And this video is long overdue. Um, it's two weeks late. Um, I've been traveling a lot. Um, I try recording it. This is the third time I'm recording it. And if I sound a little bit weird, it's because I have allergies. And if you know, you know, I'm going to try and do this as quickly and efficiently as I can. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm starting here in the Misty UI and let me just start off from the top left. And so here you can see that um, there's this Misty icon here is that you can hide workspaces. And if you click, you'll see something going away and come back there. This very first one, you're just going to have one here. This is your default workspace. So at the very top level, you have workspaces. Within workspaces, you have one or more folders. You can see I have multiple folders here. And you could create new folder by going here and then say new folder. And I can do a folder called other. Let's just call it other stuff. Let's just call it other. And you can, of course, um, put um, model instruction to inherit, which means anytime you use a model, it inherits that. But we're going to leave that out. And we're just going to say create. And now, I have a, I have three folders here, stuff, other, and miscellaneous. Notice how other looks sort of grayed out and has this question mark. That's because there are no conversation or chats in it. So what I can do then is open it up like this and you can see new conversation. And if I click it, now I have a new conversation using the Llama 3.2 vision model. And I can send that prompt to the model. So each conversation is a set of a collection of prompts, which is what you send to the model, and then the response back from the model. And then you could have multiple conversations. So I can start a new conversation. Notice it's a new conversation, and I can do that with another model. And I send the same prompt to yet a different model. And so what you can do then is you can organize your conversation by renaming them, giving them better names, or if they're conversations you no longer want, you can delete them. Go ahead and I delete these conversations, as you can see, delete conversation, edit the title, I could clone the conversation, I could move conversation between folders. So hopefully you get that. Now, here is this plus button that allows you to create a workspace, or like it says, import a workspace. So if I click this button, I can say new workspace or import workspace. If I say new workspace, now I can give this workspace a name. Let's call it private. And so you can choose a path on your file system where you can store this, and then you can pick an icon. So previously, I used this icon for coding with V, but I can for private or maybe I use the shield and um, you can choose what to copy from the default works workspace, which would be like the prompt and set in and remote model providers and all these other things. So that all in this new workspace that you're going to create, you have essentially um, those same thing. Uh, we're going to talk about knowledge stack in a little bit. Hopefully that helps you understand what workspaces are. And you can see if I select this workspace called um, coding with V, I have a miscellaneous folder already, and it doesn't have anything in it. Um, there's like useful shortcut for starting a new conversation and so on. But if I click on it, you can see I can start a new conversation here. So rinse and repeat exactly what I showed you before. Let's keep coming down. Here, I just updated my Misty. So it's showing me this icon that says, see what's new in this version. If you don't see that, don't worry. This means that you didn't update yet. You might also see a cloud button showing you that there's a new version of Misty available for download. You click it, it's going to download it. You click it again, it installs it. And then it's going to show you that button I just had there. And then, of course, if there's nothing here, it means there's no up. Here is your remote provider. Um, this is actually your setting menu, which you can see at the top there. And it just the button just takes you to a part of the setting menu. Your general settings, you know, theme and color and book. Markdown and those sort of thing. Look at the local um, models you have. This local AI is basically the built-in Olama that ship with Misty. 
add in a um, model provider, so a remote model provider. So if you click this, we did this already. You can see the different uh, model providers here, OpenAI, Gemini, and so on. Um, you have things like the default prompts and so on that you could set up. Um, don't worry about license and access. Now, if you continue down, you can see um, your local AI models. And again, these are ones that you can import into the uh, Olama that's embedded within Misty. And so it makes it very easy to see and um, import them so you don't have to go to olama.org to search for models. You can do them right here. So you have one nice place that you can do it. You can see the, the sizes of the model, what they're um, capable of. You can see this is Gemini model. It says multimodal. Multimodal means that how it can do a few things. Like here you see text and vision. Uh, we're going to talk about that later. You can see here this model is coding and text. Some of them you might see tool calling. Um, or in this case, this 5.4 model from Microsoft is just text only. So um, based on what you're trying to do, you will want to install a model for that sort of thing. You, you get the idea. N the next button coming down is Knowledge Stack. Clicking on Knowledge Stack, you'll see that um, it asked me to add a knowledge stack first. Now, what is a knowledge stack? It tells you a knowledge stack um, is a collection of files and folders, or maybe if you use Obsidian Notetaker, um, Notetaker in the application, you could use that as a vault or notes or YouTube transcripts that you can mix and match basically into one stack. And now you can use that stack when you're interacting with the model. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. So for example, when I have new chat, I can say I want to use one of the stack that I have. So I don't have a stack, so when I click it, it asks me to add one. But if I had a stack, I could select the stacks that I want to use. And now when I type my prompt, the model is going to use that information in my stack um, to help provide answer. So you can imagine, let's say I have some, let me switch back to here. And so this is the default. And let's just click on stack. And you can see I have a stack for notation data and I have a stack for chase statement. So all my chase credit card statement, I put them in a folder and I created a stack that points to it. And all my notation, um, note-taking data, I have another stack for it. So if I want to ask question about the notes I've taken, I can just select this and then now I can ask question. I'm not going to do it because that's not what I'm trying to demonstrate. Similarly, if I want to ask question about my chase statement, understand what, oh, I spent some spending money over the past year, the last month or whatever, my largest um, purchase, all that sort of stuff, I could just select that stack. And so that's just in additional information that the model can get that you can use to provide you answer, right? Um, of course, you can select multiple stacks at the same time. This is your prompt library. So it's a way to give you a nice running start about different things. So you can just go through here, look for prompts or search for a prompt. Um, so example, proofreading. Um, so there's a proofreader prompt. You can select it and it says, I want you to act as a proofreader. I will provide you text and I would like you to review them, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, check for spelling and all that. And so that's your instruction to the model. And it gives you a placeholder where you could know type the text that you want the model to proofread. So let's say I copy prompt to clipboard and I go back, I close it and I go back here now and I paste it. You can see that here's that prompt. Um, and now I can put some text in afterwards and say, you know, like some message or something I wanted to proofread. And when I send it, it's going to proofread. Just know that there are a bunch of prompts there and you can modify them, you can clone them, add new ones, that sort of thing, right? Um, then there's a settings button here, which opens a setting menu, which we saw before. So we're not going to go through that again. I already showed you how to create a new folder by going here and say new folder. And of course, you can start new conversation. If you already have a conversation, you want a new one. Just click the button here, or you can always go up to the top and be able to click like new conversation. So there are many ways. And of course, you know what this is. This is a way for you to select um, the model you want to use. As I mentioned before, 
your list of models is also going to be tied to your workspace. This is some model option. So depending on the model that you're using, you can set some model option, the creativity of the model and the other things. Different models have a context window size. Uh, we're not going to talk about that right now, but think of it, how much you can give the model before it starts sort of forgetting things. We'll talk about it another time. This is basically real time data. So models are trained on data and they have a cutoff time, which is when they stop training the, day, the model and say so it has only up to information up to that point. So let's say this model was trained two years ago. It wouldn't have any information about who's the current president of the United States, right? What we can do is either update the model and hope that the model provider has given it new information, or we can just say, go search on the web. I am not telling the model itself to go on the web. What I'm really doing is telling Misty to search the internet, get some information, organize it, and provide that to the model. So it's almost like oh, when we use the stack thing, where the model is provided with more data that it can use to provide you the answer. So let's ask that answer again, this time by checking use real-time data. So we have a few options. I can just delete this chat and don't want it anymore and just create a new chat and ask the question again by clicking real-time data. I could just click real-time data and submit the question again. But the problem with that though is, remember the context window that I mentioned? The model have all this memory, well, up to that limit, but it has memory from the previous answer. And same thing, we give it new information. Essentially, it's going to have new and old information and it might still output the wrong answer. So one other thing that Misty allow you to do is to basically say, shield the model from this point on from the previous answer. So that's essentially like creating a new chat, but you still get to see the entire conversation. So instead of deleting this, I'll show you that feature where we just say shield the model from the previous context and it's going to be um, able to just continue. And from here, we'll say, answer this question now with real-time data. And so if we send that off and we wait a little bit, you'll see it come back and notice all the information is correct this time. And it's actually tell us the sources that it used. And so if we click the button, we can see the actual sources. If you don't want it to consider one of those sources, you can actually remove that source, regenerate the answer. So you have a lot of control just in case it did look on the web at a place that may be maybe just missing, missing information or old information. So continuing from real-time data, um, you have quick prompts, which I sort of showed you at all. There's this prompt library. So if you click here, you can search for those same prompts. And so we can do proofread again. And we can just select it here instead of, you know, when we, the last time we found it, we, we had to um, copy it and paste it. But here we can just search for it here and it's going to be inserted. I mentioned knowledge stack before. So this icon allows you to attach files to the conversation. And again, you can attach images, doc files, anything like that the model support. Remember I talked about some models are multimodal. So you have to be able to um, attach a file that the model supports. And so for example, um, let's, let me start a new chat and I will have to try and make this fast because this video is already very long and I'll go to my Llama tree vision model. Let me select an image. So I have some files here. Now this PDF is a quote I got from a company to, for a tree service to remove from trees in my yard. And so I can add it to the prompt. Um, of course, you can you click this and then navigate or drop the files there, but you can just drop them at the bottom. And then now I can say, what do you, what can, let's say, what can you tell me about this file? And notice I don't even say what kind of file it is. It's a PDF with a tree quote and so on, but I'm going to let it think about it and tell me. Now, while that's doing that, so this, because this video is already long, um, you have more option here and you have something called sticky prompts. I actually have no idea what sticky prompts are. I've never used it. And then if we go all the way around, um, I mentioned this before, you can click this button to stop generation or you can click it here. Um, and if we come all the way around this way, you have chat options. And so you can bookmark the chat to find it easily, um, flatten chat 
we're not going to talk about it right now. And of course, you can export and keep the data for your chat. Um, finally, there's um, this split in chat window where you can have multiple chat going. So if you have the resources on your computer, you see I can split this and I can use another model at the same time. And I could split this as many times as I want. But of course, if you don't have the computing resource to run multiple models at the same time, it sort of doesn't matter. It's just going to slow it on your computer. And then there are things like you can um, see a visual map of your chat. And this is when we have a chat going and let's say we edit it and ask a conversation, it causes a branch. And so now we can just click on this to um, see what that branch should look like. More on this in another video because this video is already long. And as you can see, while I was talking, um, this model examined that file and told me, so, you know, this is about tree service and, um, you know, the total price and so on. And, um, estimate number of the date and I redacted some of the information, the contact information, so it couldn't tell me that. Um, I can say like, tell me about removal of the sweet gum tree. Um, let's see what it says. And so once again, similar to being able to create stacks and I could have created a stack with those files that I have there and then you now just simply select that stack and then say I want to ask questions about it. Or if you don't want to do that, I could just drop the files that I want to talk about. Um, I want information about here. And there you go. It found that information and that is correct. Okay, so um, like I said, um, I wanted to make this video quick, but it wasn't that quick. But I hope you learned something. If you did and you're a first time visitor here, please consider subscribing if you like the material. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being patient with, and returning and coming back and supporting the channel. And um, if you have questions or concerns, please let me know. Um, please thumbs up the video. Um, that helps the YouTube algorithm in terms of um, making it available to others to find. Um, I appreciate it. Take care. Be safe. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.